Ali, yeah. do you want to intro the vlog? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. Do you want to at least tell us where we are then? We're in Milan. No, what do you mean? No, but I mean like specifically. I don't know, we're at a castle. What's going on people? We are in Milan, in a park specifically in Milan. Just thought we'd come for a little two-nighter. Um, Three days, just rush, well, not even rush around actually, just have like a chill one. I've not vlogged in ages, um, and I've not even vlogged much today because it's been a bit hectic like getting here. But we've just been to a little castle by the now we're going to a little arch over there, and yeah, it's gorgeous in it. What? So I don't know what that means. I'm not. How's your Italian? Going on people, it is day two in Milan. Today we are gonna get the train back into the center um, and head to the Duomo, like the sort of cathedral looking thing. Uh, we've also got a brunch. Oh yeah, we're going to the, the shopping place. I don't know, it's Milan. Um, thought I'd give you a quick tour of the gaff before we go. This is quite cute. This bathroom's actually really long, you can't tell on this camera. Cute little, like, let me start with the right kind of animals here. That's the gaff. Cute little kitchen and that. Cute girlfriend and that. Doing her eyebrows and her eyelashes. It's pretty small, like, but it's quite cool, isn't it? Yeah. I like it. It's not bad. It's nowhere near the, um, the centre though. We thought we were going to have to walk like 40 minutes but luckily there is a train station like right around the corner. Mm -hmm. In these videos I always say like vlog places when you go to a different city that's how that's the best way to see the city. I think like when you've only got a limited amount of time like we're only here for two nights the train is probably like the best way to do it. Much like in Amsterdam when we got bikes everywhere because we were only there for like a limited time. First observations about being in Milan is that a lot of people dress to come to Milan as if like anybody really gives a fuck but I thought I'd, I thought I'd try and participate you know dress smart she looks cool Nancy Webb then. Bit of tap for you. <laughs> so, uh, currently on GIMP watch. Let me see if I can find or see, see any GIMPs. A 
lot of people taking pictures, right? And taking pictures is sound, because obviously I film a lot. But every now and again, oh, look at that dog. Every now and again, you get some fucking gimp. He's doing it for the clout. For the ground. It's not something to in there in a minute. And then, who knows what we're going to do after that. Or tomorrow, for that matter. We've got like most of the day here tomorrow before we have to get the bus back to the airport. But we'll find something. We'll just chill. We'll just take in the vibes. Well done. just let us in, told us that some people still live here in some other sort of buildings out in the courtyard. That'd be crazy. Imagine living at Da Vinci's vineyard. What's your address? Oh, it's just one Da Vinci's vineyard. <laughs> Gimps. It's like a little bad day at the office. Okay, opening that big door, Abby. Oh yes, come on in. <laughs> Yo, people! It is our last day in Milan. Just walking to get some breakfast. Currently, today we got tickets to go inside the Duomo. Not really got too much else planned. Time for that, to be honest. We don't fly out until like 9 p.m. So yeah. I don't really know what we're going to do with the rest of the day, but I'm sure we'll find something. <laughs>
Christi Regis Universorum Gloriam, Covidire Mandatis, Umizzo in Celesti Regis, Sine Fine Vivere Valeam, been in the cathedral and the cathedral museum. The cathedral is really cool. I couldn't really get much footage in the museum because the people who work there take their job too seriously. <laughs> As do a lot of people here apparently. Uh, yeah the man in, who was manning the toilets yesterday was like fucking barging people everywhere. But yeah it was really cool man. We managed to catch a bit of a, a bit of a mass in the cathedral. Which is really cool. Hear a bit of the organ which sounded massive. I'm going to some lunch. Updates, right? That was a nightmare. So first of all, we got to the bus station. We got trained to the bus station. We pre-booked a coach, right? And there was a, a line, quite a long line. I was like, oh, we might not be able to get on this bus. And as soon as the bus pulled up, the line became like a clusterfuck of people that were just like trying to ram their way from, to the front to get on the bus. It's like we'd booked a specific time, you know what I mean? But that didn't seem to matter to anyone like working for the bus service. They were just like scanning anything. Because like when we were booking, it said time and we like clicked the time that would get us here for the flight. Um, but on the ticket, there was, like, there was no time on the ticket. So he was just fucking scanning anyone, letting anyone on. And I was like, you know, it's not the end of the world, we can get the next bus, it's like 20 minutes later. So I get to the front of the queue and he's like, no, this, that, this bus is full. So we have to get the next bus. But it's like, it's fine, we're at the front of the queue. There's me and Abby, there's like two other British couples. I'm like, it'd be sound. Already established, by the way, that the guy who's working for the bus service is a fucking dick. So the next bus comes and he decides to get on the bus and in charge the bus driver with letting people on. So like you have to be let on the bus first and then he scans a ticket once you're already on the bus. No like, no compassion of like, oh these people were at the front, you know, let them go first. They, they were next in line. So this, the, the fucking bus driver just starts like letting any old Tom can hurry on from like the back end of the queue, like the back end of the bus the fuck. So that was an absolute hit case. Like, I had to like bath any way onto this fucking bus. Because I'd be too arrogant con. So we finally get to the airport. And uh, the queue for security runs like, you know, up and down, out of security, and then along the entire, like, check-in hall. And we're like, there's no way. We're already like running a little bit late. It's like, there's no way we're making it if we get in that queue. So then we've had to buy, we had to buy last minute like security fast tracks, which was only six quid to be fair. We, we did it on the way out for a little call, but we just didn't think we'd need it on the way back. So we managed to get through in pretty much no time, but it's just been a hassle, mate. 
my hand's not what it's cracked up to be. So there you have it, man. That was the final trip of 2022. What a year. What an absolutely insane year. If anyone has seen the videos that I've put on this channel this year, you'll know that I've been to some amazing places. Pro probably the best year of my life. And a large part of that is due to the travel that I've done. There's obviously other contributing factors to that, but I think definitely like putting myself out there and going to places I've never been before and like just putting myself in positions that were outside my normal comfort zone has just expanded my horizons so much and I hope that like maybe not this year, I'll talk about that in a minute, but in like, you know, maybe towards the back end of this year, next year I do get to do a bit more travelling because that was that was insane. I think I'm gonna do a video where I like rank everywhere that I've been last year. Um, and just talk about my general experiences with the places that I've stayed and stuff like that But I should have done it already really like this video should have come out months ago And then that video should have come out at the start of the year But like I said before it's just been an absolute whirlwind Before I go off on a tangent about my life and stuff I'll talk about Milan It was a cool few days man It's a nice it's a nice city Like I did say in the vlog bit um, of the video the, There's some weird things about Milan I mean first of all people You do run into a lot of people there who have like come to Milan like dressed for Milan because it's obviously like quite a fashion city like even getting the plane man like you could tell when we were still in Liverpool airport that there were some people that were dressing as if they were going to be like hit by paparazzi when they got off the plane at the other end you know what I mean that was a bit weird just because I can't really I don't really relate to that you know like who, who actually gives a fuck the city itself was really pretty gorgeous I, what you'd expect really it's an italian city you know what i mean you can't go wrong in terms of like aesthetic and architecture and stuff like that the food weirdly enough i was like italy gonna be sick i was kind of disappointed maybe that's just like the places we ate and obviously we weren't there for that long and the service was a bit weird as well like everywhere we went we kind of felt like we were a burden to the wait staff that were working that night you know what i mean so that was kind of strange there was no um no like warm nice connection from people you know what i mean we did go to a couple of nice restaurants and the food was decent but i think it is very expensive for what we were getting which was my main issue with it the whole city is very expensive and i also think there's not a shitload to do maybe that's just us being like bad at travel but like we thought the stuff that we had planned was going to take us far longer than it did and then we kind of ran out of stuff to do. What we should have done in hindsight, and I would recommend this, is I think you can get a train up to Lake Como. We should have done that for one of the days, really. Um, but like I say, we thought that it would take longer to get around the stuff that we had planned than it actually did. Like I say, it was quite an expensive place. I think it would probably be a good place to go if you were going to go shopping a lot as well. There's a lot of big stores there. Obviously, like I say, it's a fashion city. If you're going somewhere to spend your fucking money, then Milan is definitely the place to go, you know what I mean? Regardless, the stuff that we did do, uh, like, like Da Vinci's Vineyard and the Duomo and the museum attached to that and just wandering around the city and the castle and stuff like that are all sick, all really cool places, you know what I mean? I, I did really like going into the Duomo, absolutely beautiful cathedral um, and even the museum attached to that was sort of quite interesting as well. The Airbnb that we stayed in was quite nice to be fair man, it was small but we didn't really need it for much, you know what I mean? And I probably wouldn't stay there for more than the time we stayed there for, but then again, I probably wouldn't go to Milan for more than the three days that we went for. We were staying quite far away from a lot of the main city center attractions, um, but that didn't seem to be a problem because the trains there, like the just general underground public transport, was really good, man, really efficient. That's one thing I will say about Milan, like the public transport is actually sick. What wasn't sick was the airport transfer. Now, this was maybe, <laughs> I was gonna just blame Abby for this then, that's not fair, but like, I didn't really, she was just like, oh, should we go to Milan? And I didn't really look into it too much, so like, that's maybe why the Airbnb wasn't near the city centre, and also we flew to an airport that wasn't actually in the city, which maybe I would have avoided had I have realised at the time how far away it was. We flew to Bergamo, which is like an hour drive away from actual Milan. Um, and also like the, the trains are kind of weird in, in that respect like it seemed really difficult to be able to get from the airport into Bergamo itself and then get a train from there to Milan so we did end up going for a coach transfer fuck me what a nightmare man like everyone we met working for that coach service was an absolute dick I'll, I'll try and find you the name of the coach service because like if you're going to go to Milan avoid at all costs right I'm pretty sure that the company is called Omeo 
O M I O. Fuck them off, man. Don't don't bother. Particularly getting back to the airport um, from Milan City Centre, as I mentioned in that clip, was a total nightmare. Like it was an absolute clusterfuck trying to get onto the coach because they don't they don't like sell a certain amount of tickets for each coach journey. They just sell tickets and then like if you get on the coach you get on the coach which was not the impression that we got because we we like chose a time beforehand so we thought you know we'd be on that specific coach so we did almost we didn't almost miss our flight but like we were it was in question how we were going to get back to the airport at one point because we were like well fuck if we don't get on this bus then we are actually going to be late by the time we got to the airport security was an absolute nightmare it's a tiny airport and everyone in Milan seemed to be leaving that weekend you know what I mean so I would recommend buying security fast pass I think it was like six euros not much at all we bought security fast pass going out there from Liverpool as well not that we needed it in Liverpool at all but it just it, it's a comfort really and it like it does help knowing that no matter what time you get to the airport you'll probably be able to get through security pretty quick but yeah man there you go there you have it that was Milan it was a it was a nice time a pleasant time mate um, not by any means you know in my top five of, of last year but it, it was good it, it's a nice place man but I, like I say I wouldn't go for more than the few days that we went for now let's talk travel plans because currently I have none last year was very much the year where I knew that I was going to be working for certain periods and not working for other periods and I knew that I could travel in those off periods um, this year is a similar thing work wise but I am also like working on a lot of other career stuff outside of my day job um, which means that like I'm no I sort of need to be in the country you know what I mean like I need to get my act together really um, I'm also debating like moving sort of later on in the year so I'm trying to save money for that um, but again everything's very up in the air at the minute man in my life so who knows, it might get to summer and I'll decide to just fuck off to Australia for a bit with the money that I've saved, um, which actually doesn't sound like a bad idea. <laughs> but in terms of how that affects this channel, I would like to keep making videos. I think I will keep making videos, just odd vlogs or like uh, think pieces on, on different stuff. But like I say, I'm busy as fuck at the minute and also like career wise, what I'm trying to do really needs to take a uh, sort of priority so there isn't much time outside of that for me to do this and have a life you know what I mean but whenever there's interesting shit going on or whenever I've got something I feel worth documenting or sharing I will grab the camera uh, because I, I do this is like my my passion really well this is like my hobby in a lot of ways like I really enjoy making these videos but it's hard for me to find the time because I'm trying to make other hobbies and passions into actual career stuff um, so I guess we'll see how we go but hopefully there will be a decent amount of videos in the next year like I say if I do anything cool if I travel I will be bringing the camera with me as always thanks if you have watched these travel vlogs over the past year and um, they've been like very bitty quite fly on the wall not very organized at all but i've had a sick time filming them a sick time putting them together so i hope anyone watching has too i'll see you in the next one peace boys <laughs>